Hey YouTube, it's Navy98. Got a bit of a rerun for some of you. Uh, about a year ago, January 2020, I, st I decided to start uh, my YouTube channel. And the first four videos I did were of an unboxing and restoration project on a Doug Relic World War I German Trent Shield. And going back and looking at those videos now, uh, they weren't super great. Uh, the audio quality is way off. And I never was quite happy with how those turned out, uh, being my first YouTube videos. Of course, for most people, you know, you don't really know what you're doing and always, they're not always the best. So I wanted to go back and just condense those four videos down, which amounted to about 45 minutes worth of footage, uh, down into one quick short video, about 10 minutes long. Uh, just showing you a condensed version of what the Trent Shield looked like when I got it, a little bit of history on it, and then how it turned out. Um, so if you haven't seen those videos and you want the uh, unabridged version, uh, please go back and watch those. Uh, like I said, the audio quality is not that great. But I just wanted to talk to you about uh, this uh, infantry shield. Uh, you'll sometimes see it referred to as a Trent Shield or a Sniper Shield. Um, but what the Germans called it was the model of 1916 uh, Infanterie Schild, or Infantry Shield. And they used these in, in several different uh, capacities during the war. And then the type and the shape and the amount of armor uh, evolved over the course of the war, too, as uh, weapons uh, got better and they developed armor piercing rounds. So this particular version here. Um, as you can see, it has a kind of a curved front and a little uh, portal that can be rotated uh, to stick a weapon through for an observation portal and firing portal. Um, and then the Germans developed these to, uh, to use in the trenches as well as um, carrying them. So you see here a, a picture of a bunch of guys in the trench uh, sticking their Mauser rifles through the trench shields. Um, again, you can, they were used as observation portals uh, in the trenches as well as in a set, set shield capacity. Um, you can see here where they were also used. You could carry them. They had a leather strap you could attach to them and carry them as you were advancing. Um, and then bring them to another position where they can be put on the ground. Uh, this is a bit of a stage photo here, but you get the idea. Um, and then there were some crazy ideas that the Germans came up with, like, like this, which is kind of a rolling trench shield. But these presented a huge target on the battlefield for artillery, so they weren't really that practical. So aside from that contraption, uh, these trench shields are pretty ubiquitous throughout the war. All the major countries and the Allies and the Central Powers all had their own trench shields. If you've seen the movie 1917, you might have seen the trench shields scattered about the German trenches uh, as they walked through them. So before I get back into some more history, uh, I'm just going to roll on some footage of my rust removal process for the shield. I originally started off with an electrolysis bath, which you've seen in some of my other videos, uh, but I tried some different techniques and a different sacrificial anode that I'd seen in another video. Uh, unfortunately, I ended up pumping too much current through that sacrificial anode, and uh, it basically ate it apart. So I went to an evaporust bath instead and set it in there for a week, and this is what it looked like after the week. Um, so I did a pretty good job of removing the rust and then if you want to really if you want to look at how I removed the rest of the rust and Painted this and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I encourage you to check out the longer form uh, of these videos So getting back into some of the history again So these original Trent shields were 24 inches wide by 18 inches tall uh, And they weighed about 30 pounds they were made of the same material that they made their stall hems out of, which was the silicon nickel steel, um, and about a quarter of an, in quarter of an inch thick, or six millimeters. Um, again, they evolved over time throughout the war as uh, they developed armor-piercing rounds, and um, these were less effective. Uh, the British actually purchased big game express rifles um, at the beginning of the war when these shields first came out in order to counter these shields. I'm just going to read from some German literature from 1915 talking about the shield. Um, it says the infantry shield affords protection against bullets at up to a 30 meter range. Um, in the case of short rushes, the shield can be folded and carried in a special strap 
and failing this, a rope or rifle string can, sling can be used. During a rush, the shield is placed before the left shoulder and carried in front. The strut and the hook to which the strap is attached are grasped by the left hand, the head and shoulders are not, and the right arm are thus protected. The carrying strap is hung around the neck. If the ground is clay and damp, it's advisable to place the shield on stones or planks to prevent it from sinking in. The shield should be arranged on the ground that its shape should, does not stand out. When it's being used exclusively, exclusively for observation, it can be placed on its side so that the tel telescopic sight can be fixed in the loophole. Um, so these shields are made by uh, a few different manufacturers, Krupworks, the Bismarck factories, and the Becker and Lindenberg Steelworks. And all of these shields are stamped with the trademark of these firms um, somewhere on the shield. However, I was not able to find any markings uh, on my shield. The reason why it's curved at the front is basically as an anti-spalling measure per to prevent um, bullets that ricochet or break apart when they hit the shield. So here's how it looked when I completely cleaned it up. Um, again, I completely de-rusted it, added some rust preventative on it, and then I used um, some paint that I got from Hessen Antique, which is kind of a field gray uh, from the time. Uh, these might have been painted that color. They were also camouflaged in different patterns. And like the literature said, I mean, it was advised to camouflage these things pretty well because artillery could pinpoint them uh, and take them out. Uh, I've seen a couple pictures where they've actually placed decoy shields at different parts of the trenches um, to draw the artillery fire while the actual shields uh, were in another spot. So I hope you guys like this condensed video uh, of the trench shield restoration. Again, if you want to see the longer version, please go back and look at those four videos that I published uh, last year. Uh, this was a really fun project for me. There are a few sellers on eBay right now that are selling these uh, shields, both uh, in, in their original dug state or some they've been restored a bit uh, by the owner. Uh, it seems like quite a bit of these are being dug out uh, by relic hunters on the eastern front um, right now. And I think they tend to run for about $300 shipped to the U.S. So it is a cool piece of history to have uh, if you do have a place to put it. Luckily, I have a spot in my man cave uh, where I display this. Um, you can see here that I have a Gewehr 98 poking through to kind of simulate what it might look like uh, in a trench. So if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Navy 98 saying, Go Navy!